Oh, come, all ye listeners. <laughs> it's beginning to look like the most wonderful time of the year. Tis the season to eat, drink, and be merry. Ho, ho, ho! Christmas is so much more than just gift-giving, decorating tinseled trees, and totally tacky sweaters. Let's rejoice and revel with some caroling and cocoa and whatever else comes up. Join me as we unwrap the age-old celebration known as Christmas on today's FYI. <laughs> Welcome to For Your Info. English. You got it. You got it. Hello, 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 and happy holidays. That's right. Happy holidays to all of our listeners, wherever you guys are listening from. It's a pleasure to have you with us on board on this week's FYI, which is a very special episode of FYI because it's the last episode of season one. Can you believe that? Yeah, I can't believe it myself. 30 episodes done and dusted. And we've covered so many different things in these 30 episodes. I hope you guys have enjoyed each individual adventure. And remember, in the next season, we're going to keep going deeper and deeper and delving into all kinds of things. And as you can hear, there I go again with my double, triddle, uh, triddle, triple, and quadruple uh, alliteration. So guys, uh, it is the holiday season. The holiday season is in full swing, as we say. Estamos en todo el meollo, ¿no? Estamos en medio. It's in full swing. This is a great expression to know. And I said happy holidays. If you guys noticed, I didn't say Merry Christmas or Happy Christmas even. Let's look at the difference. Who says Merry Christmas and who says Happy Christmas? Well, I've got to say Americans generally say Merry Christmas, whereas Brits say Happy Christmas. Just a little note, but either way, it's fine. You're, you're wishing somebody a Merry or a Happy Christmas. They're synonyms. In fact, one of my favorite expressions comes from the word Merry. Cuanto más mejor, the more the merrier. So I say happy holidays because I grew up in the United States. I grew up in New York, a multicultural city. So I've got people in my, you know, my Rolodex, como decíamos en su día, en mis contactos, and they are people who celebrate Hanukkah. Those are Jewish people, Jewish friends of mine who celebrate Hanukkah, aunque tenga una CH, se pronuncia Hanukkah, which is an eight-day celebration. Fijaos, no he puesto ese porque es un adjetivo. Hanukkah is an eight-day celebration. There are also people who celebrate Kwanzaa. So I thought, you know, one that I've always said since I lived and worked in New York that kind of encompasses all of them, engloba todos, is Happy Holidays. And that kind of includes everything. Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, New Year's, right? We've got New Year's Day, que es el 1 de enero, January 1st, and we've got New Year's Eve. You call that one Noche Vieja. We don't call it Old Night. We call it New Year's Eve. So you can say Happy Holidays even after Christmas, because remember, in the States, we don't celebrate the Reyes, the Three Kings. We celebrate Christmas on the 25th. And speaking of Eve, we just said New Year's Eve is Noche Vieja. Well, Christmas Eve is Noche Buena. And I know in Spain, you guys open your gifts on Christmas Eve, right? On that night, Eve, que viene de evening, evidentemente. But not in the States. We wake up early. I think it's the earliest uh, that you wake up all year long and you run 
to the Christmas tree and you rip those gifts open and you see what Santa brought for you. And that's on the 25th. So we're going to look at some of those things, some of those similarities, some of those differences. As always, we're going to look at a little history and I'll also share some of my experiences uh, celebrating Christmas in New York, perhaps one of the most amazing places to celebrate Christmas and New Year's. So we are we are going to be celebrating. We've got so much to celebrate. As I said, not just that we're in the holiday season uh, and that it's in full swing, as I said before, but also that this is our 30th show and we're going to wrap up our first season. So thank you very much. And speaking of wrap, to wrap, that's what we do with gifts, right? We wrap up gifts and we unwrap. We're going to look at that word in a moment. It sounds the same as rap, like rap music. But no, it's got a W before it. So uh, to wrap something up. And what do we wrap up our presents or our gifts with? You guessed it wrapping paper. I love it. I love it when it's so simple, but wrap up is also acabar. So see, there I am with my punny words. You see that word punny? It's a mix of the word pun and funny. A pun is un juego de palabras, and funny, evidentemente, es gracioso. Y no lo confundamos con fun. A lot of my students mix these words up. Funny, gracioso, fun, divertido. All right, so let's take a look at the intro. As always, I've sprinkled all kinds of Christmassy words in the intro. Let's take a look. Those of you who were paying attention realized that I slipped some Christmas carols into the intro. That's right, to slip in is meter, and Christmas carols, you say, villancicos. So let's see if you caught them. The first one I obviously sang, so that one was easy. O come, all ye listeners, which is really, O come, all ye faithful. That's the original version. So then I went into another Christmas song, and I said, It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. But then I mixed that one with, The most wonderful time of the year. Lo piastes? Did you guys catch it, or did it go over your head? Remember, if something goes over your head, you don't catch it. You don't get it. So it's beginning to... I'm going to sing them and see if you guys get them now. Oh, come, all ye listeners. And then I said, it's beginning to look a lot like the most wonderful time of the year. And there's another one. Then I said, tis the season to eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> the, the real song is, tis the season to be jolly. There's another way to say happy. We looked at uh, before, happy Christmas, merry Christmas. Well, there's another one, jolly, have a holly, jolly Christmas. We can learn so many words from Christmas carols. I mean, and we're going to look at Christmas carols. In fact, we're going to look at unorthodox Christmas carols. I know you know all these classic ones, and we need to look at these because we're going to learn from them. But we're also going to look at some more rocking ones and less traditional ones as well later on in the show. So, tis the season. Tis the season. What is this tis? Porque se escribe T-I-S. Well, tis is it is the season. But nobody really uses this except for in biblical references or this song. But we do say, eat, drink, and be merry. Eat, drink, and be merry. Now, this is funny because it's a, it's a collocation. We say a lot, oh, this holiday season, we're going to eat, drink, and be merry. Be happy. So learn that collocation. Then I said Christmas, and I spelt it with an X in the script. You can put the word Christ, like Christmas, or Xmas, which is what I do because I'm a little bit lazy. So Christmas is so much more than just gift giving. To give a gift is dar un regalo. One of my favorite verbs in the English language is to re-gift, re-regalar. O sea, somebody gives you a gift like a blender. Una trituradora, and you're like, oh, I don't know if I want this. Oh, but my uncle would love this. So you re-gift it. So we say it's gift giving, okay? The, the, the act of giving gifts. Then I said decorating tinseled trees. To decorate, that's obviously something we do at Christmas time too. We decorate the tree, we decorate our homes, and tinsel is espumillon. We looked at that in the Hollywood episode because 
Tinseltown, if you remember correctly, is a synonym or it's another way of calling Hollywood. So tinseled trees. Do you guys, are you noticing all the alliteration here? Gift giving, tinseled trees, and totally tacky sweaters. Now, I know you know the word sweater, but the word tacky, this is a good word to know. Something that is tacky is, you would say, say in Spanish, ortera. It, it means in bad taste. So you know the sweaters I'm talking about. I love them, but let's admit it. If you wear them any other time of year, people are going to make fun of you. To make fun of is burlarse de. All right. Hey, try it. See what happens. Uh, so totally tacky sweaters. Then I said, let's rejoice and revel. Now the word rejoice reminds me of a word you would see in church. And it's to feel happy, to feel joyful. In Spanish, oh, I'm going to try and pronounce it. Here we go. Regocijarse <laughs> or alegrarse. I think I'm going to stick with alegrarse. So let's rejoice and and revel. And I didn't say rebel, like rebelde. I said it with a V. To revel in is disfrutar, deleitarse, otra que me cuesta pronunciar, gozar. So these are some good words and double alliteration. Let's rejoice and revel with some caroling. Caroling? What is that? Dashing through the snow in one horse open sleigh. I told you before that a Christmas carol is un villancico. So if you go Christmas caroling, you go and sing Christmas carols at people's doorsteps. And it wouldn't be Christmas without cocoa. Hot cocoa with marshmallows. Esto es chocolate caliente, calentito con nubes with marshmallows. Oh. oh, see, there's always a point where I start talking about food and my mouth starts watering. And... As with every show, even though I have a script, we'll also talk about whatever else comes up. Lo que surja. This is a good one to know as well. Then I said, join me as we unwrap. Now, desenvolver. We looked at this before. To wrap something up. Well, to unwrap is desenvolver. I did that on purpose. Join me as we unwrap the age-old celebration. Now, age-old means de toda la vida. Now, it's been going on for a long time. And, uh, well, here we go. We're celebrating Christmas. And, well, while we're at it, we'll celebrate everything else we said. The last episode, the, the fact that New Year's is around the corner. And why not? I have Spanish blood. We might as well celebrate the wise men, los reyes también. So let's look at some history. I mean, everybody knows about, I mean, everybody, Christmas. Who doesn't know about Christmas? But what do we really know? How much do we really know about Christmas? Christmas is, there's no, nobody's going to argue this. Christmas is December. 25th. That's Christmas Day. We already said Christmas Eve is the 24th. And that's Jesus's birthday, right? Wrong. Well, I'm no expert. I'm no biblical expert. But most historians, okay, historians are people who study this stuff. They said that uh, Jesus was born in the spring. Again, I'm no expert. But that makes sense because uh, this isn't the first time we've heard about holidays come, like kind of adjusting things so it works for them. So according to some historians, and well, here, according to what I have, according to his segun, most historians say that he was born in the spring. So what's with this December 25th thing? This was the date that was chosen to coincide with the pagan festival. There's always a pagan element it's, un it's unbelievable. The pagan festival of Saturnalia. Does that sound familiar? It sound like a planet, right? Saturn. We looked at planets in our NASA episode. Wow, we looked at a lot of different stuff. Saturnalia. I didn't know this. I just learned this myself. And this honored the agricultural god Saturn, obviously the Saturn and the planet, I guess. And uh, they celebrated this by uh, gift giving, giving gifts, dando regalos. So Saturnalia, that's pretty crazy. And there we are again, another festival, another, uh, you know, holiday that is centered around the harvest, uh, agriculture, right? La cosecha, agricultura. It's all about that. So uh, now, they didn't make it an official holiday until the third century, the third century. Uh, and they said, well, you know what? We'll just change it to uh, Jesus's birthday and that way it works good for us. And again, it's not the first time we've seen this. People will question it, and it's debatable. But I think that's what makes it interesting, too. So that could be a good trivia question. When is Jesus' birthday? And you know what the real answer is? 
Who knows? <laughs> a lot of people are trying to predict. A lot of people are trying to analyze it and figure it out. But nobody really, really knows. Um, all right. So let's also uh, let's move on talking uh, about evergreens. I love this word because it's a logical word. Evergreen. Think about this. Siempre verde. Perenne. I think you say it sounds like an Italian word to me. Perenne. <laughs> It's a, another word I mispronounce. I think on today's episode, this wrap-up episode, you guys are going to see all the words I mispronounce in Spanish. Evergreens, evergreen trees, Christmas trees are usually evergreen trees. And this tradition goes way back as well. And we couldn't talk about history again without talking about ancient Egyptians and Romans. They've been involved in almost every episode, right? It's true. Think about it. We could go through every episode in the Egyptians, the Romans, the Chinese. They had something to do with everything in history. And, uh, well, what these guys did, the Egyptians and the Romans in kind, they marked the winter solstice. And they did this with evergreens as a reminder to themselves that spring would return. They got worried. They're like, I hope winter doesn't last too long. I hope it comes back. So when you're decorating your tree, think of that. Uh, it's a symbol that says, hey, spring will come back. There will be green again. And again, if you just remember that, then you'll also remember perennes are called evergreens. Another thing is wreaths, too. These round things that look like Christ's crown of thorns. Parecen la corona, right? The one that Christ wore on the cross, well, that's what those wreaths are. So everything, what I realized preparing this episode, everything has uh, a meaning, even the tree. And if not, it was given meaning later on, which is cool because there are a lot of storytellers, a lot of people, people who filled in the blank. And a wreath in Spanish, I believe, is called a corona. It's something that you can give at a funeral, but it's also something that you put on your door when it's Christmas time. And I had no idea. I've had a million wreaths throughout my whole life. Esta es otra palabra eh, con eh, W muda, como wrap, wreath. All right, wreath. And I've had a million wreaths, but I never stopped to think, oh my God. You know, and I've been to church a million times. The mass, there's another big thing. Uh, Christmas will bring out the religious person in you. People who, had, who never go to mass, uh, la misa, well, this is the, the day of the year that they go. So this even brings, Christmas is pretty powerful, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I, I never stopped to think that it was Christ's crown of thorns or a symbol of that. And uh, so that's that's really cool. In the bonus part of the show, I'm going to tell you guys about uh, the most famous Christmas tree ever, which is a different one every year. And it actually wasn't so big at the beginning. I'm going to tell you about the famous Rockefeller tree, which I've been to many times. I've seen them light it. And I remember going to the tree lighting ceremony and just being blown away by how beautiful it was. So I'm going to tell you all about that and other experiences in New York. And I'll tell you about that in the bonus part of the show. And usually bo the bonus part of the show is exclusively for patrons. Now, patrons are subscribers who receive bonus content. They also receive PDFs with the vocabulary and the expressions. And if you're on the higher levels, you have five classes a month with me. That's one weekly class which we review each episode and then one monthly class where we look at some topics in English. Plus, as with any class, you'll have access to me at all times. If you want more information, check it out. It's patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso. And as I said, since it's the holidays, it's the last show of this uh, this first season. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to give away, esto es una buena palabra para saber regalar, I'm going to give away the bonus part of today's show. So guys, enjoy it. But if you enjoy it, then say thank you to my patrons who made it possible. I can't mention all of you, but uh, I'll mention the higher level ones. So uh, that said, a shout out to my super duper students, Roberto, Jose Maria, Eva, Mila, Desiree, Alex, Patricio, Edgar, and Loles. And don't forget about the highest level, my interstellar students, Diego, Jorge, Pilar, Carmen, and Diana. 
Thank you so much to all of you for making this possible. As you guys know, it's a self-produced podcast. So if there are any producers here, it's my patrons. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, I'm looking forward to 2021. If you guys want more information or want to find out about becoming a patron, stop by. It's patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso, or contact me, and I'll give you some samples and some free information. So we all know about Christmas trees, but when did they get popular? When did they go viral, so to speak? Como quien dice, ¿no? Por decirlo así, so to speak. Que yo de pequeño, como lo decimos, so to speak, en mi zona, yo pensaba que era soda como refresco. Entonces mi madre dice, so to speak. Pero también se puede decir so to speak. Escrito es so to speak, como quien dice. So, when did they go viral? Well, it was way before the social media age. It was Prince Albert. That's right, Prince Albert of Germany introduced a tree to his wife. His new wife, his new bride, Queen Victoria of England. And she loved it. And the fact that she loved it made everybody else love it. And then there was a drawing, un dibujo. El verbo is to draw, pero a drawing es un dibujo. And it was the couple, la pareja. Remember, partner is one. The couple are both of you. And they are in front of a Christmas tree uh, in the Illustrated London News. This was in 1848. So it wasn't a picture. It was a drawing. And, well, that... Uh, people in London saw that, people around England saw that, and it caught on like wildfire. Y eso es como decíamos que algo iba viral, antes de decir que era viral. So it caught on, or to add emphasis, it caught on like wildfire. It went viral. And then, well, in England, people started buying trees and decorating them, and that also started happening in the United States and in other parts of the world. And now we know some of the most, most amazing um, holiday celebrations are in Germany and in so many amazing... Uh, the United States, we go all out. Lo damos todo. And I'm going to tell you about that in the bonus part of the show, uh, how in the States, I've seen people like literally put on plays, montar espectáculos, do like living nativity scenes. A nativity scene is el Belén, right? Uh, and I've seen people literally act it out. Just So I'll tell you about that stuff a little bit later on. But uh, all right, so what about St. Nick? What about St. Nick? Who's St. Nick? Well, St. Nick is another way we say Santa Claus. And what would Christmas be without Santa Claus? Oh, man. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Joyful St. Nick, as they call him. Well, uh, many people know that it comes from St. Nicholas, obviously, St. Nick. But the real saint was not a bearded man. He didn't have a beard. Careful with the pronunciation. I've heard a lot of people say uh, bird or bard. It's beard. Uh, barba en español. And, uh, well, he didn't wear a red suit. So he wasn't too much like the Santa Claus we know now. Coca-Cola had a lot to do with that, and we're getting there. Ahí vamos. All that stuff came much later on. Uh, but uh, according to legend, and a lot of this stuff, too, that's why I'm not, like, confirmed 100% Jesus was born on October 24th, because a lot of this stuff is hearsay. It's legend. Uh, it's been passed on by word of mouth. And so according to legend, según leyenda, the 4th century bishop... Obispo, I think you say in Spanish. He gave away, we looked at that word before, regalar, his inheritance, right? All the money that he had when he died. So he gave, And he had a lot of it, by the way, and he gave it away to help the needy. And that's a good word to know uh, because at Christmas time, it's a time to do things too. Not just at Christmas time, but all year round, it's a time to do things for other people, not just people who are needy, que necesitan. La ayuda. But he also rescued women from servitude, no? Servitud, I think you say in Spanish. And uh, his name was Sinterklaas, Sinterklaas in Dutch. And that uh, eventually morphed into Santa Claus. And now we know he's got elves, he's got helpers, he's got deers, and he's got a red suit. But all this stuff was later. In fact, the, the way we know uh, Santa Claus now, you know, when you, you close your eyes, you say Santa Claus, you see that beard, you see those rosy cheeks, you see that red suit, that big belly. Well, that's Coca-Cola. Nice job, Coca-Cola. Um, they said that before this, this Sinterklaas guy was a bit spooky. 
un poco, quedaba repelús. And in 1931, this beverage company, so to speak, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got jokes, so to speak, como quien dice refresco. <laughs> well, this beverage company hired a guy, an illustrator named Hayden Sundblom, and he hired them to, he hired this, they hired him, excuse me, he didn't hire them, they hired him uh, to help with their magazine ads. Now, the, the Brits say adverts, The, the Americans say ads. The, the word, the real word is advertisements, but Americans say ads. And so they, they turned him into kind of like this happy kind of guy, this elfy kind of character, because they felt like he was too spooky. And they even said some kids were getting nightmares. Imagine that now. Imagine Santa Claus giving kids nightmares. Well, there was a day when that happened. Did you guys see, have you ever seen the pictures going around on the internet of Mickey Mouse before he was kind of cutened up a little bit? Uh, I don't mean Mickey Mouse the cartoon. I mean the people who, the costumes, the people who dressed up at the parks. It was pretty creepy. Uh, so Coca-Cola, you know, wow, pretty powerful. But I guess they did a good thing. They cleaned up his image. They made him a jolly, funny, good-natured man. And uh, so then where did the stockings come from? Stockings. Now, I never knew this. We always had stockings on the fireplace. Los calcetines estos que cuelgan. These stockings. And it's funny because what Santa does is he stuffs the stockings. Y los regalos pequeñitos los llamamos stuff, uh, excuse me, <laughs> stocking stuffers. Es un trabalenguas. It's a tongue twister. <laughs> uh, stocking stuffers. So uh, I had no idea where this came from, this whole idea. I know that Santa Claus came down your chimney at night. I know that you're supposed to leave milk and cookies for him and the reindeers. I know you're supposed to be a good boy, all that stuff. But I didn't know anything about the stockings or where that came from. And, uh, well, what I realized was that uh, basically, again, uh, we, we talk about charity a lot when we talk about Christmas. People, uh, you know, hopefully are thinking more for once in their lives more about giving than receiving. You know, that's the least we can ask for from Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, or any holiday. So again, according to legend, these stockings, it was a, there was a poor man. He didn't have enough money. He was needy, as to use the word we looked at before. And he had three daughters. And well, this guy, generous old Saint Nick, you know, that's his thing, generosity. Well, he dropped a bag of gold, right, down their chimney. And uh, what happened was they had their stockings hanging up on the chimney to dry, sure, by the fire. It's interesting, the chimney is the interior part, and the, the part that you sit in front of we call the fireplace. And that's another memory I have of Christmas. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost snipping at your nose. <laughs> Chestnuts. I forgot how you say that. That's something. Look, see, there's something we have in common. Castañas. Chestnuts. And we know it from that song. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. So they were drying. Think about that. They wanted their stockings to be dry for the next day. They had washed them. And when he dropped these coins, these gold coins, down the chimney, they went into the stockings. And when the girls woke up in the morning and they were going to put on their stockings, they found these gold coins. And I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm buying it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love these kind of stories. Uh, also, now, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. That's an interesting one. They're the classic Christmas song, right? This is as old as Christmas itself. Nope, not really. 1939. This song first appeared in 1939, and there was a de uh, department store. Now, a department store is como un almacén, like a corte inglés type store. De departamentos. Kind of makes sense. A department store. And they asked one of their guys to create a Christmas story. Kind of like the Coca-Cola thing. He's like, you know what? We like Christmas, but we got to add something to it, you know? So they said, create a Christmas story uh, so that we could give it away as a promotional gimmick, you know, and because they were giving away coloring books for many, many years, but they decided one year, we're going to make our own. So we got to come up with our own story, our own character, and maybe a song, a little jingle, una ráfaga, and then we can save some money and give away these coloring books. Now, you know, stores don't give anything away, <laughs> but uh, so it was a gimmick. 
It was a promotional gimmick created by a department store. That famous song, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw him, you would even say it glows. So look at that. That was a money-saving technique. But now it's one of the most famous Christmas carols out there. We'll also talk about in the bonus part how Jingle Bells was originally a Thanksgiving song and what this popular Christmas song has to do with astronauts. Really? Yeah, there's a link, I'm, I promise. And we're going to look at it in the bonus part of the show, which is free for everybody. Uh, just make sure if you like the show, guys, um, give us a, a little feedback. Give us five stars. Leave us a comment. I try and read them all wherever you listen to the show. Leave us a comment. And uh, that, I would be very, very thankful, eternally grateful if you did that. Now, if you don't like the show, obviously, don't say anything. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, but uh, let's uh, let's finish up the first part, and then we'll we'll gear up, ponernos en marcha for the second part. We'll uh, we'll end up this part talking about reindeer. I mentioned the word before, if you were paying attention. Reindeer, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Well, yeah, Santa, everybody knows that Santa has elves and he has reindeer. Uh, remember, this word is in uh, an irregular plural. We don't say reindeers, right? It's reindeer. Thierbo is deer. So, reynos, reindeer. Same thing. No ponemos ese con es plural. So, that's why I said Rudolph has, uh, not Rudolph, Santa has reindeer. Rudolph, obviously, the leader. And uh, yeah, this was uh, created, I didn't know this, the whole eight tiny reindeer that, you know, pull this sleigh, trineo, oh, and we're going to talk about sleigh riding, bajando en trineo, oh, that was a part of my childhood, we'll talk about that in the bonus part as well, but uh, yeah, the eight reindeer pulling the sleigh, that was Washington Irving, you're thinking, Washington Irving, I know it rings a bell, me suena ese nombre, the Legend of Sleepy Hollow, The Headless Horseman. Yeah, well, he wrote a lot about St. Nicholas, uh, about Santa Claus as well. And he was the one who uh, gave him the eight reindeer. So pretty interesting how Santa, you know, the story, the Christmas story just has kept growing and growing. And it's because of people's imagination, whether it's for marketing or just uh, to tell a great story. And uh, well, uh, I got to say in the second part, we're going to look at, we've looked at a lot of Christmas carols. So we're going to look at some non-traditional, some unorthodox Christmas carols and some movies that you should check out during this holiday season. So we'll be right back after this break on today's FYI. Hello, 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 my amigos, and welcome to this, the bonus part, which is available for everybody on this, our 30th episode. Yeah, that's crazy. 30 of anything, 30 episodes. I hope you guys have been enjoying the different topics. As I said, if you have any suggestions, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And if you guys are thinking about becoming a patron, but you're not sure, you have questions, or you just want a sample just to see if it's right for you, let me know. I'd be more than happy to give it to you. Let something positive come out of this 2020. I'm sure, well, just the fact that you guys are listening right now and working on your ling uh, your language, <laughs> your English, your language, you could say either one. If you're working on your English, that means you're doing something positive and you are wrapping up the year, para usar esta palabra, acabando, you're wrapping up the year on the right foot, con buen Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about Christmas in the U.S. You've all seen it on Twitter. You've all seen it on Facebook. Man, we go all out. You know that song, that Christmas carol? Deck the halls with bells of holly. Fa la 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 la, la 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 la. Deck the halls means to decorate. We don't really say it too much, but uh, we say to decorate. Deck the halls. We decorate the tree. We put up 
the tree, right? To put up, esponer. And uh, as I said, we put tinsel on there. We put ornaments. I mean, there's no wrong way to do it. You can decorate the house. You can decorate your car. Some people dress up the dog. As I said, in the United States, we go all out. No nos cortamos un pelo. And there are even, you know, articles, there are write-ups, otra forma de decir, artículo, in the paper that tell you where to go, where they have the coolest decorations, where the houses are really just huge. I mean, I can imagine there, when I talk about huge, I'm not talking about the houses being big. I'm talking about they got so many lights on the house that their <laughs> their electricity bill, their utility bills are really high. But I think it's worth it because I remember with my grandma, we used to go around and we would, uh, it would be in the paper and she would say, we're going to go to this address, then we're going to go here. She would literally draw a map of all the houses we would go and visit. And these were complete strangers. Many of these people we didn't know. But some of them were local celebrities. Oh, Mr. Johnson, let's see what he does this year. I'm seeing in Spain, you guys decorate, and you do. You put up lights, and you put up tinsel. But if you've ever celebrated Christmas in the States, it is absurdly, we overdo it. But we don't believe in overdoing it, right? In Estados Unidos, pasarnos, what does that mean? To overdo something. Piénsalo, sobre hacerlo. But uh, if you've ever been there, you'll know it's awesome. My wife, I remember we were in New York one Christmas and we were in the middle of nowhere. We were at my aunt's house in New York State, you know, on a lake and there was nobody there. You know, it wasn't like a very famous, well-known area. And my wife was just, her eyes were popping out of her head when she saw all the houses and the decorations and the lights. And she says, this is incredible. I go, well, none of these are even in the paper. These are just the normal ones. <laughs> so, um, you know, you might put up a snowman, you might put up some lights, but in the United States, it turns into a battle. Who has got the more elaborate, the more festive decorations? And I have been to ones that... I, it's literally like an orchestrated light show, and they act out the nativity, as I said in the first part. Eh, representan, they act out el Belén. So uh, if you can ever do it, uh, I mean, even if you're not in New York, just celebrate one Christmas in the United States, anywhere. I'm sure New York is just magnified, you know, but uh, anywhere in the States, I, you know, even as I said, in a little town, People go all out. And I think, you know, I don't want to you know, speak for my whole country. There's over 300 million of us. But I do think that this is our most popular holiday. I know it's the one where people probably spend the most money and, uh, well, rightfully so. Sometimes you have to splurge, right? To splurge is to spend a little money, especially if you've been being good all year. You haven't been naughty. There's another one from a song. He's making a list. He's checking it twice. He's going to find out who's naughty and nice. Santa Claus loss is coming to town. So have you been naughty or have you been nice? Are you going to get a lump of coal under the tree? A lump of coal? We say carbón. I think in Spanish too, if, you, uh, if you've been naughty, if you've been a bad boy or a bad girl, you're going to get a lump of coal in your stocking or under the tree. So uh, speaking of the tree, the greatest tree I've ever seen was my grandmother's. All right, well, after my grandmother's, the Rockefeller Center tree. Oh my God. It's not huge. It's uh, ginormous, which is a, a portmanteau, a mix of the word uh, huge and gigantic. No, yeah, gigantic and enormous, excuse me. <laughs> gigantic, huge, and enormous. All three of those mean very big. And this tree, it's famous. I mean, everybody in the world usually tunes in now because of internet and watches it. But I remember going there many times, especially when I was in college. Remember, uh, college is not uh, colegio, it's universidad. And I remember going there the night that they lit the tree. El verbo es to light, encender, pero como es en pasado, it's lit, light, lit, lit. So they, they lit the tree, and it was just a festive celebration. I remember some of the happiest moments of my life there in Rockefeller Center as they light the tree. And right below it, if you guys remember uh, from the movie Home Alone, speaking of non-traditional Christmas movies, which are classics now, uh, the ice rink. 
right? La Pista de Hielo, which is there with the golden statue of Prometheus. So that's, uh, that's a classic Christmas, and they always decorate it with these angels on the way. So the tree is there, but just arriving at the tree is like this epic thing. They really put a lot of detail in it, and it's elaborate, and that's why people flock, eat in Massa, that's why people flock there from all over the country. But it wasn't always ginormous. It grew little by little. It started because construction workers first placed a small little tree there in 1931. So it was Christmas time, 1931. And the construction workers said, well, we got to celebrate Christmas. Let's put this little tree over here. And uh, well, two years later, there was another tree there, this time with lights. It continued to grow and grow and grow, and now the Rockefeller Center tree uh, has upwards of, más que a veces, 25,000 twinkling lights. There's another word we can learn from a song, twinkle, que brilla. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder. So if you ever get the chance to go, go. If you don't have the chance to go see the Rockefeller Center tree, what you have to do is check it out uh, streaming online. I know you can check it out. Uh, but it's not the same. Being there and then, you know, walking around New York City, taking a walk down to Times Square, having a hot cocoa. Ah, there's nothing like it. Uh, you know, it's cold, but for some reason, we don't mind it. No nos uh, importa nada. But did you know that? I, 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 again, I've been going to that tree. That tree has been a part of my Christmas since I was a kid, but I had no idea it was just a little tree. And now here's my question. One of my favorite pictures is this famous picture of construction workers sitting on an I-beam and they're having lunch. I'm sure you've all seen it. It's behind me in my studio if you've ever seen me live stream. And that's Rockefeller Center. They're, they're building the Rockefeller building. So a part of me asks myself, are those construction workers, the ones that are having lunch in that famous picture, are those the guys responsible for starting the Rockefeller Center tree tradition in 1931? Could be. Could be. Hey, guys, while we're weaving stories, uh, you know, Coca-Cola took the liberty to say what they wanted and, you know, the department stores. Well, hey, I think this is a good one. Those guys were the ones who put it there. Sounds great. And it gives you that nice, warm, fuzzy Christmas feeling. And as I mentioned before, my grandma, how could I think about Christmas without thinking about family members? Specifically, my grandma, she really went all out. Uh, otra vez, lo da todo, ¿no? Se pasó, se puede decir. And my grandfather had a pharmacy, my grandfather Alberto, and she used to decorate the window, el escaparate. And I used to help her. And that was just such an amazing thing because I got to be creative and decorate and and she really got into it. My grandmother really got into everything and she was creative. So she always decorate. I mean, her house looked like Rockefeller Center. That's why I said my favorite tree is really my grandma's. And can I tell you a secret now that she has passed on or passed away? She liked her tree so much and everybody else liked her tree so much that it came to a point where she left it up all year. Yeah, lo dejó puesto todo el año. I'm not kidding. <laughs> you can talk to my mom and confirm that. She would cover it with plastic. Uh, she had an I mean, she had a big house. Let's put it that way. So it didn't it wasn't taking up necessary room to take up as ocupar, but <laughs> she kept it up all year at the end. But I have so many fond memories and my first Christmas away from home, away from my house was at my grandmother's. And I was three years old. And I can, can you believe that? I remember it like it was yesterday. I was three years old. Uh, and I know how old I was. I, I don't remember that part. But I know how old I was because I wasn't home that year. My sister was born on December 22nd. It was 1980, if you want to be exact. And that Christmas, I was at my grandma's. And I didn't get it. Christmas Eve, I went to bed at grandma's. And I said, wait a second, does Santa Claus know I'm here? I mean, how is he going to know that I'm at grandma's? How is he going to find grandma's address? Address is dirección. We don't say direction. We say address. And I was, oh, I, I think I barely slept. And then I remember going down to her basement to the Christmas tree, and there were so many gifts. It was chock full of gifts. And I said, Santa, you found me. <laughs> it, was, it was magical because that Christmas I was like, oh, this is different. 
And then we got the greatest gift of all. I got a sister <laughs> that Christmas who was born on December 22nd. And in fact, her name is Natalia. You know, many of you, I have Italian blood. My family is of Italian descent, too. And if you think about it, uh, how do you say uh, Merry Christmas in Italian? Buon Natale. Natalia? <gasps> That's right. Natalia was our Christmas present in 1980. So 1980 will always be a special Christmas for me because I was worried. And then everything just worked out. <laughs> Todo se solucionó. I talked to you guys before, too, about sleigh riding. That reminds me of the family, too, with my, my cousins, my friends, my sister as well. And we would go sleigh riding. You say trineo. On a sleigh or a sled. Se puede decir. A sleigh or a sled. And you've heard this one. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh, all the fields we go, laughing all the way. Ha, 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 bells on. <laughs> you can tell I'm getting into the holiday spirit as we speak. All right, well, sleigh riding. Uh, I don't know if you guys do it. I don't know if we get enough snow in Madrid. I'm dying to take my daughter sleigh riding. I was lucky because I, I grew up in the mountains. I grew up in the middle of nowhere. So we had a hill, una colina, behind my house. And we used to build jumps. And, I mean, we would build some, we would spend like the whole morning building a track, una pista. And we almost had like our own bobsled thing. We really, I, I think we pushed the envelope to push the envelope, es decir, uh, probar los límites. And as I said in the snowboarding episode, uh, I'm lucky I didn't get any broken bones. I mean, I've broken a bone, but it was because I got hit by a car, not... Uh, because of all the crazy stuff I did and sleigh riding. And I already said, I said to my wife, I can't wait to take her sleigh riding. She goes, she looked at me like, <laughs> you want to run around in the snow and get wet? I'm like, yeah, that's what we used to do. And uh, that's when I grab my wife and I pull her under the mistletoe. Mistletoe. I think you say muerdago. This is a, a kind of flora, a kind of plant, which is an ancient symbol. I didn't know this, too. An ancient symbol of fertility and virility that the Druids uh, used. They considered it an aphrodisiac. Ooh. But uh, I'll tell you something. The name isn't uh, such an aphrodisiac. I didn't know this. So mistletoe. You know, if you the, the legend says if you kiss somebody under, if you're under the mistletoe with somebody, you got to kiss them. That's the way it works. And I know people that used to walk around with mistletoe and be like, oh, look at that. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> I've seen it work for some people because Christmas is a crazy time. You know, <laughs> people are drinking more, eating more and lots of parties. This year it's going to be different with COVID, but uh, we'll st still keep our loved ones close to us in our hearts and in our minds, of course. So mistletoe, really nice aphrodisiac, but the name is disgusting. It's gross. So uh, basically, missile thrush birds. It's a type of bird. I don't know too much about birds, but it's missile thrush. And this bird eats these uh, plants' berries. Okay, it eats the berries, como las moras de esta planta, you know, the little blue or red things that are on there. And they digest the seeds. And then the droppings, the droppings, las cosas que caen, let me translate that, the poop, la caca, eventually grows into a new plant. So the word mistletoe is Germanic. It comes from the Germanic word for dung on a twig. And dung es caca, D-U-N-G, on a twig en un palo. Yeah. Yeah, did you guys know that? I, I had no idea. Well, first, you probably didn't know the word mistletoe. But it's not as romantic as it seems. <laughs> Still feel like kissing somebody? Um, another thing that reminds me of the holidays, and I, I, you know, you can eat them, you can decorate with them. They're candy canes. Candy canes. And they were supposedly invented by, a, not invented, but created, I would say, you know, because many people were making candy and forming it into shapes. But uh, there was a choir master, de un coro, oh, very popular at Christmas time, a choir master. Well, 
Well, these candy canes, aside from being sweet, they didn't have such a sweet beginning. They were to keep the kids quiet during their church services, during Mass. It was so those kids would hush up and be quiet. So, hey, that's I think it works, though. You want to keep me quiet? Give me something to put in my mouth. <laughs> you know, it's that simple. But it wasn't until 1847 there was a German-Swedish immigrant who decided, wait, these have a little hook, gancho aquí, and, well, you know what, we could put these on our Christmas tree, and that would look cool and everything, and, uh, well, the rest is history. I've been to places, speaking of going all out, in the United States, I've been to places where they have, like, gourmet candy canes. They literally have, like, 75 different flavors. They're handmade, hand-dipped, and if you guys, shame on you, shame on you if you thought that candy canes were just mint or peppermint flavor, the menta. No, 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 no. There are so many different flavors. My favorites are the uh, the ones I They're hard to find here in Spain. Um, if you can find them, send them to me, and I'll love you forever. They're the candy canes, the colored ones, but they're sweet. Don't get me wrong. No me malinterpretes. The, the mint ones are good. They're the classic ones, but I love the, the multicolored ones that taste more like candy and less minty. They're sweet. So if you can find those and you send me a box of those, I will love you forever. Uh, they're hard to, I'm telling you, I've been living in Spain for 15 years and certain things are harder to find. All right, well, let's uh, let's take a look then at some of our Christmas carols. We said we were going to look at Christmas carols, Biancicos. And speaking of, uh, the famous Charles Dickens novel is called A Christmas Carol. Uh, un cuento de Navidad, pero realmente es un biancico. So A Christmas Carol, the famous one with Scrooge. And it's funny because our friend Charles, Charles Dickens coined the term Scrooge. Before that, we didn't call somebody Scrooge, somebody who was a penny pincher, somebody who was a miser. We didn't use the word Scrooge. We would say, this guy's a miser. This guy's, you know, mean. This uh, novel was so popular, and obviously later it's been made into musicals and all kinds of, it's, it gets put on every Christmas, interpretado, put on. This play gets put on. I've seen it a million times. Scrooge, the classic story. But until that time, we didn't call somebody who was a penny pincher a Scrooge. So thank you, Charles Dickens, for that word. And it's the classic tale, you know, of Ebenezer Scrooge, who's visited by three ghosts, the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of pre Christmas present, and even more scary, the ghost of Christmas future. <laughs> classic story, Scrooge. And, uh, well, um, I love it. I love that one. It's uh, definitely a classic. And when I think of Scrooge, too, I think of uh, not just the musical versions and all that, but what about the um, the one with uh, Bill Murray, Scrooged? Now, yo sé que en español se llama los jefes atacan a los fantasmas atacan al jefe. I don't know. So it's very literal in Spanish. In English, it's Scrooged. Con, so it's la palabra Scrooge con una D. So again, that's that, that story that's told over and over. It's a timeless story. It's told over and over again. Just like the song Jingle Bells, that Christmas carol, the first one we'll look at. Uh, this was uh, originally uh, meant to celebrate Thanksgiving. So uh, the song was originally called One Horse Open Sleigh. And this is another one that we misinterpret as kids. I, when I was a kid, I thought it was Dashing through the snow. Dashing is como corriendo, dando, yendo rápido. Dashing through the snow in a one horse. Oh, so it's one horse open sleigh. No, un trineo abierto con un caballo. So in a one horse open sleigh. But I used to think it was one horse soap and sleigh. So un caballo, jabón. Y trineo, in a one horse soap and sleigh. <laughs> Te lo juro. <laughs> I think a lot of American kids, when we hear the song and we don't know the lyrics, we think that that instead of one horse open sleigh, when we sing it's when a one horse soap and sleigh, soap and sleigh. <laughs> Those misheard lyrics. So yeah, it was uh, created for a church's Thanksgiving concert. There's another thing. You see a lot of concerts and choirs. And this was in 1857. And, but then they decided to reuse the song. 
they said, you know what, this is a great song. This this could work. So let's switch it up a little bit and we'll republish it. We'll change the title to Jingle Bells and it's a Christmas song. And it worked. It actually worked, my amigos. And uh, well, Jingle Bells was so popular that not only have there been many, many versions, we've got Jingle Bell Rock, which is also uh, kind of a spin-off of that. But uh, Jingle Bells was so popular that it also went into space. That's right. Uh, there was a, a uh, nine days before Christmas. This was in 1965. Uh, two astronauts that were aboard the Gemini 6. Well, these astronauts, uh, they had something odd that they reported to Mission Control. Odd is raro. They claimed that they saw an unidentified flying object. You know it as a UFO. We don't say UFO, we say UFO. And it was about to enter the Earth's atmosphere. So yeah, they say, mission control, we've got an unidentified flying object. It's about to enter the Earth's atmosphere and it's traveling in the polar orbit from north to south. And then they interrupted this very tense, almost, <laughs> you know, they could have caused some problems there, but they interrupted it with a rendition of Jingle Bells. That's right. <laughs> One of the astronauts played it on a small harmonica, uh, Wally Shearer, while he was accompanied by Tom Stafford, who was playing these small sleigh bells that they had smuggled on board. Lo han traído a bordo. So I thought that was hysterical. Uh, that, you know, people were all like, oh my God, we got a problem. Unidentified flying object. What is it? and they were reporting Santa's sleigh. And now you guys know it. You can track Santa's sleigh. There are apps and there are all kinds of web pages where you can track Santa's movements just to make sure if you're at your grandma's house, he knows you're there and he doesn't skip over you. To skip over is saltar, evidentemente. Christmas is also a time to watch movies. You know, you're snuggling up on the couch, you got the fireplace going, and it's time to watch some flicks. So what do you watch? Well, sure, you can watch It's a Wonderful Life. You can watch all these, you know, Rudolph, that's a great one, Rudolph the Claymation. Claymation is cuando usan arcilla y lo animan. It's a mix of the word animation and clay. And so there are some classics, but today I figured, you know, you can find lists of those classics on the internet. I thought I would compile some movies and songs that were about Christmas, but weren't as traditional as, uh, for example, All I want for Christmas is you. And let's be honest, if, you're, if, you, say, if you say you don't like that song, Okay, you might be sick of it, harto de ello, but if you say you don't like it, you're not human. It's just, it just, I don't know about you, but it, it puts me in the Christmas spirit. And there's something I want to say, too, before I go any further. I'm talking about Christmas as a joyous time, a happy time. But for a lot of people, Christmas is a time to reflect. And sometimes people realize they're alone or they don't feel good. So, or something happened, they lost a loved one. And so you think of your grandparents at Christmas. So... It can also be a very trying time as well. And I feel like we couldn't talk about Christmas without talking about sometimes it's like many holidays can be difficult because you remember going to see grandma and grandpa and then one year you don't go see them anymore and you never will again and they're not part of your Christmas anymore. And that there, there's something, there's an element of sadness to it as well, just like everything. So let's look at the non-traditional ones. We're not going to focus too much on the sadness. But guys, guys, if you're out there, if you're feeling sad, you don't feel good, guess what? There's help. You can talk to people. There are people who will listen. Um, they're called psychologists. And, uh, and you don't have to be alone. And you know what? Everybody feels alone at times, especially when we lose loved ones. So I'm here to tell you, keep your chin up. Como decimos, eh, la mandíbula hacia arriba. Ánimo, keep your chin up. All right, well, you can watch any of these movies and it'll put you in a good mood. My first one is Gremlins. What? Gremlins? Christmas movie? What are you, high? Estás colocado? Uh, yeah, it takes place at Christmas and they talk about, you know, being mean and there's a Scrooge kind of character in it and there are these monsters that if you don't follow the rules, if you're not a good boy, if you're naughty, uh, there will be consequences. Oh, yeah, it's, a, it's a Christmas movie. Sure, it's a Christmas movie. Uh, Die Hard. There's another one. Oh, gotta love it. Uh, yippee ki mother. 
I'm not going to say it because I don't want this to get an explicit rating. <laughs> I don't want the podcast to get an explicit rating, but Die Hard, uh, the Die Hard movie. And uh, in Spanish, you say jungla de cristal. But in English, it makes sense because it's got a double meaning. Die Hard. It's hard. He won't die easily. No muere fácilmente. But also Die Hard es a muerte. So he is a Die Hard fan of his ex-wife, right, for example. We already mentioned Scrooged with Bill Murray. I know you say Bill Murray, but it's Bill Murray. Uh, Batman Returns. There's another one uh, that takes place. Tiene lugar in the Christmas season. I love that snow scene. That's beautiful. Um, and then there's L.A. Confidential. If you haven't seen that movie, it's a great movie. And it's a movie that takes place during the Christmas season and has Christmas references. So, again, these are movies you can watch without feeling like you're watching a Christmas movie. And then there's my favorite Christmas movie of all time. And this really is a straight-up Christmas movie, but it's a comedy. And it is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. This is my absolute favorite Christmas movie. If I don't watch this, it's not Christmas. All right, and let's look at our playlists as well, just to wrap up our episode. Remember, um, we have uh, the word wrap up, which is acabar, también es envolver un regalo. If you found those candy gains, you can wrap them up and send them to me. There it is in context. Let's take a look at our playlist. And again, I'm not going to give you all I want for Christmas because you know that one. Or last Christmas, I gave you my heart. I know you know those ones and they're great. And they're cool, and we've all heard them a million times. Even John Lennon's, so this is Christmas, and what have you done? Love it, but we got to look at some other ones. So I highly recommend The Fairy Tale of New York by the Pogues. If you like Irish music, it's awesome. It's called Fairy Tale of New York by the Pogues. And it's your non-traditional Christmas song. It's about falling out of love. So to fall in love is enamorarse. To fall out of love is desenamorarse. It's not Christmas for me without listening to this song. It's, oh man, for me, it's, it's above all the rest. So this is my top song, I would say, Fairy Tale of New York City. My, ta- my top album is Twisted Sisters, Twisted Christmas. Now, I know, you're thinking, Twisted Sister? Yeah. We're not gonna take it. Or wait, what's the Spanish version? Huevos con aceite. No. <laughs> twisted Sister, A Twisted Christmas. It's got the classics, uh, but uh, Twisted Sister style. If you like rock and you like Christmas songs, listen to it, A Twisted Christmas. They do the classics such as, Oh, come all ye faithful. But then they've got the 12 Days of Christmas, which they do, and they call it Heavy Metal Christmas. Oh, it's my heavy metal Christmas my true love gave to me. And then they list, like, you know, all kinds of things, like five Aussie albums, four leather jackets. It's really, really cool. And it's a, they're videos, too. So as with all of the uh, Twisted Sister stuff, you'll get a visual treat, too. Even if you don't like Twisted Sister... There, it's a fun Christmas album. Uh, then uh, we're going to go with a non-traditional one. And this is uh, New York. This is a classic. The last two I'm going to give you are New York classics. And the first one is Christmas in Hollis, Queens by Run DMC. Oh, classic. It's Christmas time in Hollis, Queens. If you have not heard this, listen to it. Do yourself a favor. Favor. <laughs> I'll make up words here. Uh, do yourself a favor and uh, and download it because it's worth it. It's in New York. It's it's definitely a must. And the last one, which is more an Italian American kind of thing, but remember, in the New York area, there are a lot of us. Somos muchos, the Italian Americans. And there's one called Dominic the Donkey. <laughs> Dominic el, el Burro. And it goes, ching and ching It's Dominic the donkey. ching and ching The Italian Christmas donkey. Oh, la, la, la. It's really funny. And I think we're going to play a little bit of it here as we say goodbye. Maybe we'll say goodbye with Dominic the donkey. <laughs> this is, believe me, if you grew up in my area, in the northeast of the United States, especially New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, look at llamamos the tri-state area, then you're familiar with this. And if not, 
Get ready to laugh and have some fun. That said, guys, we have reached the end of today's show. I want to thank you guys so much for a wonderful first season, you know, 30 episodes. All your feedback has been amazing. And I just want to thank you for being there. Uh, Those of you who are patrons for making it possible. uh, As I said, you are my producers. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And those of you who are thinking about becoming patrons, Uh, Now's the time. In fact, we've got a special deal until the end of the year. You'll get a 16% discount and I'll enter you in a drawing. But Alberto, you said drawing is dibujo. Well, no, this drawing is sorteo. So I'll enter you in a drawing to win uh, earphones and, uh, well, much more. You'll you'll take a look at it if you want. It's all at patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso. And there's one thing I want to remind you, uh, not just here now because it's Christmas, but generosity, goodwill, charity. These are all things that we should practice, not just uh, during the holiday season, not just one day or 15 days out of the year, but all 365 days a year. So that said, thank you so much. I'm very thankful. I'm very grateful for all of you. And I wish you all a happy holidays, a happy holidays to you and your family. And como decimos, ahí acabamos. That's a wrap. Here's Dominic the Donkey, and we'll see you in season two. Thanks again. Hey, jingity jing. It's Dominic the Donkey. Jingity jing. The Italian Christmas donkey. La 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 la